Om Gyan Timirandasya Gena Jana Salakaya Chaksu Un Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvishesa Sunyavari Pastyat Yare Satarine Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Iti Namine Shri Varshabhanavi Devi Daite Kripav Daya Krishna Sambandha Vigyanam Daine Prabhave Namaha Madur Ojwala Premadya Shri Rupanuga Bhakti Da Shri Gauda Karuna Shakti Vigrahaya Namostate Namaste Gauravani Shri Murtaye Dinatarine Rupanuga Virudapa Siddhanta Dvanta Harine Namo Gauda Kusharaya Saksad Vairagya Murtaye Vipalamba Asambo De Pudambu Jayate Namaha Namo Bhakti Vinodaya Satchirananda Namine Gauda Shakti Virusurupaya Rupanuga Parayate Gauda Vibhava Bhume Stvam Nirdisesha Sajanapriya Vaishnava Sarvabhoma Sri Jagannatayate Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadat Har Sri Vasari Gaur Bhakta Vrindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so today is the uh, Uttana Ukarasi, and it's also the uh, Divine Disappearance Day of the spiritual master of Srila Prabhupada's spiritual master, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, um, and we are honoring his Guru Maharaj today, Gorky Shore Das Babaji Maharaj, uh, whose Disappearance Day is today. And so we'll try to speak a little bit in relationship to the life of this most extraordinary personality, extraordinary in so many ways, um, unique in his bhajan, and also an example of the principle taught by Lord Chaitanya of renunciation. Vairagya Vidya Nija Bhakti Yoga Lord Chaitanya's movement is based on the principles of Rairagya. Uh, Mahaprabhu, Bhakti Ganir, Vairagya Pradhan. That's first from Chaitanya Charitamrita, which says that Vairagya is the life and soul of the devotees of Lord Chaitanya. <laughs> and so Gorky Shordas Babaji Maharaj was a Babaji. In our line, we don't have Babaji's generally, but in this case, there is one. And uh, of course, our line is both Shiksha and Diksha. It's also mostly Shiksha. So you'll see that uh, Gorky Shordas Babaji Maharaj was not uh, Guru, was not Bhakti Vinod Thakur. He actually took initiation in Babaji from Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj and also was inspired by Bhagavat Maharaj, another Babaji. Um, his birth was in the mid of the 19th century, and there's no actual record of the actual date, nor is there any record of the names of his parents. But we know that he appeared in a place called Bhaga, Bhagavan, B-A-G-A-V-A-N, which is a small village near the Padma River, which is now uh, Beng Bangladesh. Bangladesh. Um, he grew up, and uh, his parents got him married when he was quite young. But even in household life, he wasn't interested in uh, making household life his focus. So he remained quite detached, although he was in the household life. There is some talk that he was actually a merchant who had his own shop selling mostly grains. 
but that was a small part of his life when he was Grihastha. After some time, he gave up the Grihastha ashram, and he started to practice very seriously devotion to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. After worshipping Lord Chaitanya for a few years, he actually went to the north in the area, uh, in very northern Bengal. And there is when he met actually his spiritual master, Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj, along with Bhagavat Maharaj. And both of them had guided him and instructed him, but told him that he should, uh, Bhagavad, Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj specifically told him to go in Navadweep and worship Chaitanya Mahaprabhu there in Navadweep. So he did. In fact, he spent his whole life, the rest of his life, in Navadweep Dham. Um, while he was there, of course, he performed many austerities. Uh, he was not uh, interested in, although he was highly qualified, he wasn't uh, inspired to take on disciples. In fact, the idea became very uh, distatus, distasteful for him, the idea of accepting disciples. He would go regularly to hear Bhakti Vinoda course lectures when Bhakti Vinoda would lecture in different places. And being a very humble Vaishnava, he always sat in the back and just listened to Bhakti Vinod. During those lectures, of course, um, Bhakti Siddhanta, who was, was not initiated at the time, uh, he, uh, his name was Bhimala Prashad when he was growing up. That was his birth name. He could see that this person, Gorky Shordas Babaji, was a very saintly person. And then he had asked his father, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, about the importance of taking initiation. And Bhakti Vinod Thakur encouraged him that, yes, without taking initiation, human life is, doesn't begin. Uh, one has to actually uh, perform Dato Brahma Jigyasa in the human form of life. One has to inquire into the Absolute Truth and therefore, that absolute truth can only be learned by one who knows the absolute truth. So the pure devotee spiritual master is qualified to enlighten others on the truth of life and how to achieve that truth through the process of devotion to the Supreme Lord. So initiation, as it says in the Shastras, tad vigyartam guru eva abhigatsche, uh, don't go to sleep. <laughs> Abhigatsche. Abhigatsche means um, must. It's a big word, but it's the word must. That one must take initiation into the one of the four sampradayas. Of course, we are in the Madhva Gaudiya sampradaya. And therefore, initiation is the principle by which one takes shelter of a spiritual master and then learns from him the science of bhakti and is guided throughout his life by the principles taught by the spiritual master. And then one gradually makes advancement on the path going back home, back to Godhead, which is the goal of life. To go back to Godhead is the, actually the only goal of life. To stay in this material world is a form of punishment. <laughs> That's what it is. To come here is punishment. To stay here is punishment. So to get out is to be free from the, from the punishment, from the sentence of having to suffer, uh, having a material body, and accepting all the difficulties that come with living in the material world. And that's not the subject today, <laughs> but we know from the Shastras and from the words of the spiritual master, except especially Srila Prabhupada, who speaks a lot about the, the miseries of this material energy, which are constant and sometimes so overwhelming that the living entity simply wants to die. <clears throat> 
So, yeah, so the goal of life is to accept this. So, Bhakti Vinod Thakur instructed his son, Bhimala Prashad, that this you must accept the spiritual master. And of course, Bhimala Prashad was having his focus on Gorky Shordas Babaji. So, Bhakti Vinod Thakur recommended yes, he's a very saintly person, but you might find it difficult. But still, approach him. But of course, Bhakti uh, Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj would go to the banks of the Ganga River and perform his bhajan, and mostly he would just chant. He would chant all day and all night, just chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. That was basically his bhajan. There's no story of him worshipping deities at all. But he was mostly absorbed in chanting the holy names. And he lived very simply. In fact, whatever he could eat was he got by way of begging. Or not even begging, sometimes he would just bring him something. And so he was satisfied and happy. So Bhakti Siddhanta, of course, Bhimala Prashad, decided to approach him. He came to him one time when he was there, and he offered his respects, and then he started to say, I understand the goal of life is that one must accept the bona fide spiritual master and execute the process of pure devotional service. So I don't have a spiritual master, and I see that you are the person that can guide me to perfection. Um, Gaur Kishore Das Babaji listened, but then he said, I'm sorry, but I don't accept disciples. <laughs> so don't waste your time <laughs> here. <laughs> so he left, went back and was feeling somewhat despondent, unhappy. But Bhakti Vinod encouraged him, maybe you should continue and see. And so, and of course, that was his inclination. He wanted to continue to try. So the next day he went again, and in a very humble, in a very uh, pensive way, explained his feelings. And um, Gorky Babaji was, very, was a gentleman, and he listened. He said, I will ask Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, so come back in three days. So he left. Three days he came back. Again, he was eager to hear. Fell at the feet of his, his Bab, Babaji Maharaj and asked him, well, what did Lord Chaitanya say? And uh, Gorky Shur Das Babaji Maharaj responded, oh, I forgot to ask him. <laughs> So he left <laughs> and said, come back. So he came back the next day and again. And after the preliminaries of the formal reception, he then asked, yes, did you ask Mahaprabhu? Yes. What did he say? He didn't answer. So Bhakti said, that, well, Bhimala Prashad was feeling overwhelmed with, and he was thinking, what is the use of having this life if there's, I cannot achieve the goal of life? And in order to achieve the goal of life, one must have a bona fide spiritual master. And so he was thinking, maybe perhaps I should end this life. So he was walking and thinking in that way. While he was walking, Gorky sure does Babaji Maharaj was coming the other way. And he said, I was just testing you. <laughs> I will accept you. I can see you are qualified and sincere. So in 1900, the year 1900, Bhakti Siddhanta, he became uh, Sri Varsha Banabi Devi Daitaya, which is a name in reference to the glories of Srimati Radharani. <laughs> and so he took initiation and became one, the only, and of course the greatest of all disciples. 
Gorky Shordas Babaji Maharaj could not even write his name. He was illiterate. <laughs> Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati was so intelligent and so scholarly that he would sit in libraries during his college days and read all the books in the library. And he could remember everything he read. He had he was a Shruti Dara. He never forgot anything he ever heard about spiritual life or read. Prabhupada used to say about his spiritual master, he's a walking encyclopedia. <laughs> and if you read the writings and hear his lectures, it's quite erudite, scholarly, and very difficult to understand. The example is, of course, Sri Brahma Samhita, his purports for that. Uh, as time went on, Gorky Shordas Babaji Maharaj was continuing his bhajan, but he was always being disturbed by people. They would come and ask for blessings, but he could see they weren't sincere. One time, one very rich merchant came from Calcutta and sat down and appeared to be very sincere. He said, Babaji Maharaj, oh, I want, you, I want to become your disciple. Please, please give me your shelter. What do I have to do? And Babaji Maharaj said, all right, you come, you give up your business, you give up all your possession, and you come and sit down next to me and chant Hare Krishna here on the banks of the Ganges. So that was the last time he saw that person. <laughs> Sounds like today's disciples. <laughs> chant Hare Krishna. What do you mean, chant Hare Krishna? Don't you know I have my family? I have my bicycle. <laughs> I, I have so many things chanting Hare Krishna. I know, I, I know I'm supposed to do that, and I do it sometimes. <laughs> so don't get excited, Guru Maharaj. I'm still there. <laughs> this, this is not an, 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 an exaggeration. <laughs> and so... As time went on, more and more people were coming and bothering him like that. And so he was becoming disturbed. Um, let's see, one time... Um, yeah, one person came. And he was a very respectable politician. And he... Uh, he... Uh, what happened was Babaji Maharaj was offered. One person really take, took sympathy upon him and said, his wife, actually this person was quite a rich man, so he's, his wife said, Babaji Maharaj, I want to build you a cottage so you can have a place to stay. Babaji Maharaj thought about it and he said, actually, you see this building here? It was an outhouse. You know what an outhouse is, right? A place where people take care of nature. In India, you know, they have these places, little houses. It's not part of the house. To have the bathroom in a house is considered to be moochy, dirty, filthy, low class. So bathrooms were always separate from the rest of the house. <laughs> and so he said, this house house would be perfect for my bhajan kudir. <laughs> And so he said, I'm being disturbed by so many people. <laughs> so I want, a, I want a bhajan kutir where I'm not disturbed. <laughs> Nobody will come here. <laughs> and so they, they took it seriously. They wanted that man, the, the husband of the wife. He took cow dung and cleaned the whole place. And then at the same time, they fixed it up a little bit from the outside. And then he turned, he turned his outhouse into a bhajan kutir. And of course, nobody would come to see him after that. And that's what he wanted. He wanted to be alone so he could chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hmm. So when you get a taste for chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, which you do by constantly chanting, then the taste comes. Then you think, 
Oh man, cell phones, computers. Ah, oh. yeah. Let me just put them away for about a month. <laughs> you don't even want to bother with these things. Then the earlier life just comes with. Of course, you might use computer. We use computers to preach, and that is that is necessary, especially in this time period we find ourselves in. But I was just using the example to help show that you know when you start tasting the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, you want to do that more and more. You don't get tired of it. So I'm going to ask you, okay, each one of you, you ready? I'll say so. I'm not, I'll tell you, ask you ahead of time, so I'm not shocking you. Today's a codicy. And codicy means what? Chanting. Okay. So, who wants to go first and tell how many rounds they did today? <laughs> okay. <laughs> how many rounds did you do? Seventeen. Seventeen. Okay. You you chanted one round today. Good. <laughs> huh? Twenty. So you'll do three more beef tonight. Okay, Mr. G. How many did you do? Six? Sixteen. Okay, you're at zero. <laughs> Mataji. Sixteen. Oh, so, so much service, serving Guru Maharaj. He's just too much for me. <laughs> I can't, no time to chant. He's always asking me to do things. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who else? How many? Nishringa. Hmm. 25. Okay. All right, we got someone who followed Prabhupada's instructions. <laughs> yes. 23. Okay. We're, we're, How's our microphone person over there? Sixteen, you're at zero. <laughs> How many? Twenty one? Thirty one. Twenty nine. Twenty nine. Okay. Okay. I'm not telling what I did. <laughs> I don't want to say forty four. But I always chant 40 rounds on a codice. That's my vow. So today I did four extra. Mm -hmm. 40, yeah, it's, you know, I got nothing to do. <laughs> <laughs> so the fasting this morning, I, I was able to chant uh, 36 rounds before lunch. And I did the other eight rounds in the afternoon. Because when you don't eat, you, chanting is so nice. <laughs> then you don't have to worry about, you know. So yeah, we should, we understand, Baba, Babaji Maharaj, that's all he did. Just chanted, chanted, chanted. And when people came to, to ask him questions or whatever, he always felt disturbed. But he would be polite and try to answer. But he could see a lot of times they were, weren't very serious they always wanted some kind of. One time, another person came, and he was, he he wanted the blessings. He said, "You can stay with me. I will beg food, and I'll give you whatever I may give you back, and you can stay here and chat with me." But nobody was interested. He was serious, in the sense that he was a he was a budget and undy. Our line is Ghost Anandi. Bhajan Anandi means one who does their own bhajan. But still, we see he trained up probably one of the greatest spiritual masters in, in the line of Gaudiya Vaishnav history, and that is Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. In other words, he became his connection in the disciplic succession. Um, his life was basically 
just chanting and doing his personal bhajan like that. Of course, by his presence, he purified the whole atmosphere. When you have a person like that in the in the environment, the whole environment becomes purified by that. So even though they don't preach or they don't actively engage in so many things, their presence is actually very purifying. After some time, of course there's not a lot, there's one book, you can read it, it's called To Beyond Duality. It's the life of Gorkishore Das Babaji Maharaj and Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. This book is divided into two sections for describing the lives of these two Babajis. Um, it's available on Amazon if you want to get it, it's interesting. And it's a nice read. And many of the stories that we mentioned are listed in that. Um, after some time, of course, he left his body. When he left his body, the Babajis in the area immediately went and claimed his body. And their idea was to set up a, a Samadhi Mandir so they could use it to collect donations. This was their print. They, they wanted to take Babaji Maharaj's body, put it in Samadhi, and then use it as a means to attract people. Because when people come, they'll give some donation, and then the Babajis will live off that. <laughs> So when Bhakti Siddhanta, of course he was now Sri Varshavanavi Devi Daitai, heard that his Guru Maharaj left, he came. And he saw that the Babajis had his Guru Maharaj's body. He said, actually, I am his own disciple. I will establish the Samadhi. Because he could understand that they were simply interested in making some profit. They said, you can't do it. You are, you're only a brahmachari, we are babajis. And he, and he is a, he is a babaji. So babajis can only be, uh, you know, established in samadhi by other babajis. So there was an argument going on. Finally, a police officer came to see what was the argument. And he st stood there. And finally, Bhakti Siddhanta said to the babajis, all right, only, you can touch his body only if you hadn't had any illicit connection with women in the last month, in the last week, in the last three days. <laughs> and there was a group of Babajis there. I don't know how many, but there were a few or more. They all remained silent. And then the police officer said, how will you know? Bhakti Siddhanta said, I will take their word for it. And of course, the Babajis just looked, turned around, and left. <laughs> the police officer was shocked. <laughs> so called Babajis. <laughs> so then, of course, he established, he was given a piece of land by this rich person who wanted to offer something to Bhakti Siddhanta, so he could have used that land to establish his Guru Maharaj's Samadhi. But after establishing the Samadhi, the same man who gave the land came back and lived on the land. And then he started doing all kinds of nonsense, illicit activities on the land. So Babaji Maharaj, I mean Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj was really disturbed about that. And then he was praying what to do. Right after that, the Ganges flooded, and that whole area became overwhelm, overrun with Ganges water, and the whole thing was washed away. And that was an opportunity for Bhakti Siddhanta to re take his Guru Maharaj's body and reestablish it. And he did, in another area, which is now known as the Gaudiya Math. If you go to Mayapur, just down the road from our Mayapur Mandir, you'll see the Gaudiya Math. There, it's called Chaitanya Mat. It's a big place. It's a very big place. It has many, many buildings on the place. And one place within the temple, on the side of the main temple, there's another temple, 
and that is the Samadhi Mandir of Gorky Das Papaji with a beautiful um, uh, Murti of Gorky Das Papaji Maharaj. You can go, it's practically a temple itself, the Samadhi, and uh, you can offer your um, prayers and play for the breast blessings from Bhakti, from Babaji Maharaj. That compound is quite nice. How many of you been there? Okay, good, good, good. So yeah, it's a uh, beautiful deities there, Gandharva Giridhari, established by Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. Alongside of the deities, along the wall, on around the uh, temple area where the deities are housed, there are four sections where the four acharyas of the four sampradayas have their murtis. There's Ramanujacharya, Madhvacharya, Vishnu Swami, and Nirbarka. And so you can take darshan of them and go around there. And uh, of course, there's, uh, there's Shamakun and Radhakun is also there. Because Mayapur is simply a prototype of Vrindavan. So all the holy places in Vrindavan, again, are manifested in Sridham Mayapur. But the only difference is the uh, places in Mayapur, uh, there is no offense. In Vrindavan you can commit offenses. In Mayapur, Lord Chaitanya is very merciful. There's also Govardhan Hill there. You can go. It's right in within that same compound of the Chaitanya Math. It's a beautiful place. Devotees come, chant japa. And there's also an um, amazing, amazing uh, Samadhi Mandir of uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, which is right towards the entrance. And you can go, and Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati is so profoundly present in that murti. It's just amazing. So devotees go there from ISKCON all the time, and we have satsangs. We give classes there. And uh, especially on festival days, the devotees go and have programs there. So it's very nice. So you can actually spend the whole day there on a spiritual journey. So this is a little bit about Gorkishore Das Babaji Maharaj. Uh, um, uh, we don't have too much more. Of course, there are more events. But that's what I can recall right now from my readings. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. And so, uh, is there anyone that would like to comment or say anything in relationship? Mr. G, the big G. Kadadhar <laughs> Prabhu. Uh, Hare Krishna. Um, hmm. So, um, sometimes there are people who sometimes try try to shake our faith in the Acharyas. And I also uh, had one encounter like this that they say that Bhakti Siddhanta wasn't a Diksha disciple of Gorkishor Das Babaji Maharaj, if you can just... Uh, what, it, what, what are they based their statement on? No, no, did they just say it's yeah, not? They, yeah, they just said that we are not uh, Diksha Sampradaya, and <laughs> which, which is true. Well, as mentioned in the Shastras, mm, um, one of the disciples of Bhakti Siddhanta's disciple, who is, uh, he also gives the life of Bhakti, uh, of Gorky Shordas Babadri, and says he took initiation in the year 1900. Hmm. How could he accept sannyas if he didn't take first initiation? It wouldn't be possible.
And he was following in the line of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. So Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati said, I had two spiritual masters, Bhakti Vinod Thakur and Gorky Das Babaji. And when they both left the planet within a period of 14 months, Bhakti Vinod Thakur left in June 1914. Gorky Shoreless Das Babaji left the planet in November of 1915. So within 15 months, both of his gurus left. He felt alone. And then when he, when he was in that mood of feeling somewhat alone, Lord Chaitanya appeared to him along with the Panchatattva in a dream and said, We are with you. Just preach. So he got strength from... Lord Chaitanya directly. But from everything I've read from the authorities, including Srila Prabhupada and others, there was, a, he said he took initiation. What that initiation was, what was the procedure, we're not sure. But initiation doesn't have to go through the whole formalities. Initiation really means accepting the guru within your heart. And then the formal ceremony consummates that. So how that formal ceremony was carried out, we don't have any information on that. He could have just accepted him and said, yes, I will accept you and guide you. And, and then offered some prayers. So we don't know what is the actual ceremony that was enacted, or whether there was a ceremony. But all the acharyas say that he received initiation. So that's, I guess they're basing that on that, that there was no record of any formal ceremony. But Prabhupada said, initiation is in the heart. Just like if you, there's examples even within our ISKCON society of devotees who wanted to take initiation, gave their heart to a particular person and that person left the planet. And so they, in order to, uh, to uh, get, become connected to the parampara, they accepted another person as their spiritual master. But it's understood the real spiritual master is the one they accepted in their heart. Mm -hmm. And I know one situation directly, I was personally involved with this, how this one person had, you know, given her heart to this one spiritual master and he left. It was Sridhar Swami, actually, we all are the Sridhar Swami that was preaching here. And then she didn't. She was thinking, what am I going to do? But then she accepted another spiritual master. And that other spiritual master told me that her spiritual master is Sridhar Swami. And he is simply doing the ceremony and connecting her to the Prampara. So he is he's guiding her as a Shikshu guru. But her real guru is her departed person. So that is actually the principle. But it can't be whimsical, it has to be deep and something that is hard. When you give your heart to a particular person and you can't pull it away for any reason and that person is qualified, then that is the relationship. But in order to consummate the, uh, the principle, we do the initiation ceremony. And that is necessary. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And that connects the person to the parampara. <laughs> and that's how it's explained like that. So whether there was a formal ceremony or not, we don't know. <laughs> I never heard anyone say either way. <laughs> But we can take the words of our authorities that there was an initiation, that he was initiated. 
Same with Naratam Das Thakur, Lok, uh, Lokanath Das Goswami. He was the he refused, but Lokanath but Naratam really persisted and finally until uh, Lokanath Swami was inspired by Lord Chaitanya in the dream to accept Naratam. So there's another example. But we don't hear of uh, any kind of formal ceremony, although there might have been. We don't know. But we know, Lokanath Lokere Ajivan, Naratam Dastak Sor. We sing it every day. Lokere and Lokere Ajivan. He glorifies Lokanath Goswami as his Guru Manj. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anyone else? Is there any information about how many rounds does the Gorkishore Babaji chant? You might find that in the uh, in the book that's been written about his life called Two Beyond Duality. What I read today was a, a synopsis of about two pages that I got from another source. So it's not directly from the book. It's from one of Prabhupada's God brother, uh, uh, Prabhupada's d disciple of one of Prabhupada's God brothers. So, yeah. But uh, you might be able to find it. I read the book, but I don't remember. Mm -hmm. But you know, he he was chanting like Srila Haridas Thakur. <laughs> well, or at least close to it anyway. Because Bhakti Siddhanta used to say, you know, anyone who doesn't chant 100,000 names Oh, the Lord each day hasn't reached the human form of life. <laughs> that's Bhakti Siddhanta. That they mean 64 rounds. And that's what Srila Prabhupada tried to introduce into our society when we started. But then again, there was some resistance. So Prabhupada gave the minimum. And Prabhupada, even I hear Prabhupada say in his lecture, and we gave you 16 rounds, and you can't even do that. <laughs> and he was talking that about in relationship to Vishwanachara, uh, who was it? Uh, no, who was that uh, powerful yogi? Vishwamita Muni. Vishwamita Muni used to sit in ice cold water in the wintertime up to his neck and meditate. And in the summertime, he would sit in the middle of the open field, surrounded by fires in the middle of midst of the hot sun, and meditate. And Prabhupada said, "You can't even chant 16 months." <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. of course, we shouldn't try to imitate, you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> These severe austerities, but chant chant sixteen rounds is the minimum. But Prabhupada used to say chanting sixteen rounds is the minimum; it's not the maximum. <laughs> but because our society is somewhat active in doing a lot of things, maintaining buildings, taking care of devotees, and preaching and doing a lot of things, we find time is not so available. So, but if you can do, as Prabhupada said, if you can do 16 nice rounds, you use the word good, chant 16 good rounds, it's in the statement too, he uses the word good, every day, and then you'll be fixed in Krishna consciousness. Okay, thank you. All right, so I think we are about to conclude. So we can offer our obeisances and 
uh, honor on this day the one of the most amazing and most renounced of all in the Gaudiya Vaishnava line is Srila Gorky Sordas Babaji Maharaj who taught by example the principles of complete detachment and renunciation. I don't have any energy. But I'll be here. <laughs> you can find who someone who likes who has a nice loud voice. Let's see, can I choose someone? Who has a nice I think uh Donalu Dan, Danny Lou, was it? <laughs> Donna Lou? Danny Lou? What, how do I say it? Either way. <laughs> <laughs> Very detached. <laughs> he, he knows he's going to lose the name soon anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, he has a very what we say, resonating voice. So oh, I thought maybe you, if you like, you can chat. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, yeah, Paspanjali, Kaur Kishor Das Babaji Maharaj Ki Jai, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Maharaj Ki, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Ikarasi Vrata Ki Jai.